Hey Mansion Hero, Jay here. Uh, it's Thursday and uh, we're still kind of uh, figuring out how to do this from home. Um, we had some tec technical difficulties before, but uh, we were having such a great conversation. We asked uh, Dr. Zanetta to come back, so we have uh, Dr. Robert Zanetta back on a uh, video call with us. Uh, Robert, thank you for joining us again. Uh, no problem, welcome. This time Appreciate from it. Uh, home and yeah, let's, uh, do a little bit of deep diving into the topics that we touched on last time. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a it was a great conversation. I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we got you back because it was a, a really fun uh, um, conversation. Well, we were touching on uh, correlative microscopy uh, last time we we're talking. You gave us a couple examples and. Um, you know, just kind of staying on that topic of like visual inspection and metrology. Is there another example uh, of um, the kind of the marriage of, of those two in, in, in one problem? Yeah, and I guess um, as we touched down last time, if things get very small, this is where microscopy plays its strengths. And one of those nice examples where you can see the benefits is... Uh, a lot in, in the field of electronics today where bond wires are an essential part to connect sensors, to connect uh, microchips to a bigger surroundings. Um, those things are important in two aspects and where microscopy can help. First is to ensure that the bond wire sticks to the bond pet. Um, Look, give, me, give me one thing, give me scale. How big are these bond wires and how big are these pads? The bond wires are 20, 50 microns and the pads oh are not gosh. much bigger. So it's it's a process which is nicely controlled with a microscope or fully automated. So the, the wire comes and is bonded by an electrical current basically to the uh, bond pad. And it's a nice combination of the same material. So it, it's a nice adhesive. But if you want to inspect it, you should be looking not just from top down, but also from an angle to see if it sticks on the right uh, flatness of the surface if it has the right curvature because if you use too much force too much energy you just melt away the material and the bond connection is not very strong and this is where you use microscopy and digital microscopy if you want to also get to the 3d profile of your uh, bond connection and this is where you need the high resolution Okay, so we're talking a scale of about uh, 20 microns. Uh, the challenge also, so it's quite small. Uh, the challenge also is to get it from multiple angles. Um, and when you inspect again, you're typically just inspecting visually looking for um, the connection is made. Um, and then... Yeah, the connection is made, that's the first instance, but then you might want to quantify how how the 3D profile looks like of your bonded wire to the bond pad. And this is what you can do now with digital microscopy solutions where you can construct from different focus levels. You can basically construct a 3D profile and take a true measurement if your microscope is calibrated um, on the height that this bond wire has been pushed down onto the bond pad. And this can be done kind of in an automated workflow, as we explained last time. And with the addition of uh, metrology software to our image analysis, we can also measure the roundness uh, of the bond connections to the bond pad. So those kind of things are now accessible, not just from a 3D profile perspective, but also from a 2D measurement. And those values are important because they directly quantify how much material is in, inter in interconnection and how strong this bond pad and the bond wire is attached. And as I said, this is, this is needed today in most electronic applications which are made of assembles of chips, of sensors. Um, so this is an essential process that our customers are looking at in optical inspection and quality control. Okay, um, I'm still trying to wrap my arms around this because it sounds like we need a pretty intense piece of hardware. We need a hardware that is capable of high resolution, uh, multiple angles, and uh, is calibrated uh, uh, in a full volume. Do we, 
Do we have something like this in our portfolio? You can do this with a simple stereo microscope, which you have on a boom mm -hmm. stand, and you basically can look from the sides. Or if you want to then reconstruct the 3D uh, representation of your bond wire on the bond pad, you can use a digital microscope, and this can also be tilted to different dire uh, directions to really get down to this level. And usually this is done in the on the manufacturing side or quality control, but now think about applications in medical or automotive where those things are then packaged, sealed off completely from the environment, and then put into the most hazard environment that you can usually think about an automotive application because high temperatures, low temperatures, a lot of vibrations, that's really not that nice environment for electrical bonds or connections in general. And this is where the second biggest topic is for microscopy, analyzing bond pet failures. And now the question is, how can you do, how can you do this? So if something detaches uh, on such an assembly, first you have to find the one of the thousand bond, pires, uh, bond wires that really failed. How do you do this? And this is where our CT or X-ray microscopy a portfolio comes into play and this is where we get to your question of correlative microscopy because you use an x-ray to first look at this electronic package and assembly non-destructively and first make the important information where is my failure where is the location of uh, where this part failed and you can't tell from the outside my, maybe by measuring electrically but to really then go down to the failure analysis, you need to locate the error. Mm -hmm. So the the um, Zen is really the the software that kind of with that uh, correlative aspect to it can tie many pieces of hardware that do its different jobs right at the at the mac macro level. Uh, the the CT can help you guide your way in. And then a stereo mic or something like that can really help you deep dive into what happened. Yeah, and there's one, exactly, and there's one uh, important use case um, where we demonstrated this nicely for one of our customers. Um, they had one of those failed parts and they are very precious because you have to really understand what is going wrong and who's liable in the end, of course. Um, and there we used the CT solution to first, or the X-ray microscope to be precise, because we did need the resolution at a distance. We didn't want to destroy the part. We put it in the X-ray microscope and located the region of failure. And only then we did cut the part at this location and took a deeper look with the microscopy solutions to analyze what is happening. And as you said, our Zen software can take those data sets and visualize them together in our Zen Connect uh, suite and then you have the full information in one picture. And the most dangerous part is if you don't know where to cut and where to open the box, mm -hmm. you might cut away the most precious thing and that's the failure. And so the thing you're uh, this is how this workflow can basically help to uh, do a proper failure analysis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can actually go from non destructive and uh, to the destructive deep dive anal analysis without making sure you damage like you said that precious uh, failure that you're that you're looking for I can see the value we said last time uh, we might then also need the electron microscopy side of things so we had the light microscopy for visual inspection documentation XRM or CT technology to find it in the packet structure. Once it's in use, uh, how can we locate the failure? And we can then use this 3D data set to also drive our electron microscopy solutions for the analytic parts. And what we found for this specific use case that I have in mind is everything was correct with the bond wire bonding to the bond pad. Everything was perfect on this connection. It turned out that the bond pad itself detached from the PCB. And how would you ever find this if you have not an analytical capability to see that mm -hmm. there was a little bit of contamination be between the bond pad 
and the PCB, and this is where the connection failed, or where the mechanical connection failed. And we could resolve this with our electron microscopy, high resolution, and find out that there is some contamination which doesn't belong there. And so this was the key clue for the customer to solve this issue, which in medical terms leads to a lot of liability, in automotive terms leads to a lot of cars returning to the garages and getting fixed for something which might let them stranded on the, on the roadside. And this is what we can prevent by having this suite of instruments um, Starting at the beginning, make sure that the quality is right, but if something fails, give you the tools to really nail down the root cause of failure. Mm -hmm. so, that you, so you're really at uh, two ends of the spectrum. You're a vital part of the manufacturing process when you make it, and then you're also part of a failure analysis if something goes wrong down the road uh, and you need to, no pun intended, and you need to figure out what happened. Um, you can also be part of the study uh, to do that. The same software, the same the same suite of um, hardware and software. Yeah, and this it. does help us to, if we understand how the things are manufactured, and we are already involved in this manufacturing process, we also understand how a failure might look like and can use the tools and our application teams to understand better how to use the tools to locate what might go wrong. Um, and this is why we constantly also try to share this knowledge using our application notes that we put out there and to highlight how you can make best use of the instrumentation that we provide. That's and the same design. is true yeah, from in, in other areas, uh, from battery production to battery quality control, uh, where we can, we need to understand the battery production process in order to suggest the right and most productive way to check quality of batteries. And this is, yeah, in this electronic space, quite important as those things are produced at high numbers. And if something goes wrong in the process, you usually have a bigger impact. So you have to really start at the beginning because this is where uh, things are happening. Just doing failure analysis, uh, no, you should not rely on failure analysis. You should really start to get the process right at the beginning. Right, right. Uh, okay, so we... Zen sounds like a very powerful software. Is there a way that uh, uh, in this new world uh, we're doing analysis offline like we talked about last time? Uh, is, any tools, uh, anything that we can do for our customers uh, in an analysis portion? Can they get a hold of this software um, to just touch it or feel it or maybe help them out as we try to work remote um, uh, in this new world, you know? Yeah, I think... What we touched last time is that it's now available for download on our webpage and everyone can try it out. What we discovered or what we got as a feedback from last time is from our customers, well, I could get access, but please provide also the training. So we are putting out now more material on how to use the software and, and, and web-based training that can easily be downloaded from the, from the portal uh, as well. Um, and we provide those application examples where people see what is possible because you don't know what you don't know. How should you know how to use the software if you haven't seen uh, how it can be utilized in those different uh, in those different manners? And by the way, as we are quite open on our interfaces, we also accept third-party data. Don't shout it out too loud, but of course you can also upload mm -hmm. images from competition. And sometimes that's the most compelling a reason for our customers to work with us because we are, well, they can use all the equipment that they have in the lab. Just just upload the images and you can still correlate them. You can connect them. You can overlay them and get more out of your data from, we don't care about the source of it. That's great. So, so they can just go onto our website, uh, download the software uh, for free, uh, download some trainings and use whatever, uh, whatever images they have uh, and start doing some analysis. That's, that's great. Yeah, uh, and that's we know we are not alone on this planet. And of course, uh, uh, this is the reality our customer are facing. So we created those open interfaces for everyone to use the data that they have um, and continue continuously working. And if there are more questions, uh, of course, just leave us the notes. And we are constantly now ramping out our capability to make little movie snaplets on how the different modules work, how the different function works that everyone can 
basically self-train as we have our limitations with training capacities at this point of time as well, of course. Well, that's great. I, I guess I don't have any, uh, any questions. I, I appreciate you uh, uh, coming in. Anything else you want to throw out there before we, uh, before we end for the day? Stay safe and stay <laughs> healthy. I guess that's the only message to everyone. Stay home. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you, uh, you having us uh, for the information. Again, if there's any questions, uh, just type, type it down in the comment section. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks for joining us, Robert. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jake. See you next time. Thanks. Yep. See you next time. And for you out there, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate uh, you uh, letting us into uh, be a part of your uh, uh, your your life and your work. Uh, if you have any comments for us or anything you want to see, do uh, leave a comment and let us know. And stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Bye.